Hey guys, look at these beautiful onion rings. I'll tell you what, if you're wanting a fabulous but easy to do onion ring recipe, give this one a shot. You're going to be surprised at the result. Easy and beautiful and tasty. Look at that golden brown onion ring. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, we're gonna be doing something wonderful and delicious, sweet, golden brown, crispy on the outside, delicious on the inside, and so easy to make. The onion ring. So I'll tell you what, come over this way, let's go over these fantastic ingredients, and let's get this show on the road. Come on. as you see here, very, very simple. We got some onions, a bit of flour, some milk. You can use cream or half and half for this also, and some eggs. We're gonna be cooking this up in oil. Any cooking oil will work fine. However, I like using peanut oil, so I'll be using that on this one. And of course, you need something to just kind of kick back and relax with as you're waiting for the things to cook up. So pour you up a glass of whatever you prefer the most, and I'll tell you what, let's get on with making this, because this is so simple, so easy, and it's gonna blow your way at just how fun and easy it is to make onion rings. All right, guys, now, first thing we need to do is to cut up our onions, and I wanna mention this. When it comes to cutting up an onion like this, be careful how you hold it, because, you know, when they don't have a flat side or base to sit on, it can be kind of dangerous. So you want to use all due care and caution when doing this. There we go. Now the idea of onion rings is you need a nice thick ring, of course. And I find about a half inch to be almost perfect for this. So I just go at it in a liberal way, okay? Now I'm just going to start with one onion. If you'll notice, I've got big, thick, hearty rings here. Sometimes they're going to break and split on you like that. Hey, you know what? Don't lose any sleep over it. It's not worth it, and first of all, it's not going to really make any difference to that onion ring. It'll cook up just fine either way. And there you have it. Onion rings! Yay! Let's get on with cooking these guys up. Now, first things first, Let's go ahead and get these down in this bowl. Now, if you'll notice that that onion that I sliced up was nice and uh, thin, in other words, it's um, kind of a flat looking onion. Well, something I learned from mom, good old mom. You know, you gotta trust your mother sometimes. And in this case, she was dead on correct. She was raised on a farm and her father grew onions. And uh, one of the things that she remembered from when she was a child was that low growing onions or the ones that are flat are sweeter, okay? So if you're looking for a sweeter onion for this, look for a flat onion. Now take that uh, flour that you had and sprinkle it over those, okay? Give them a shake. And all we're doing is just giving them a light flour coating on the outside. Now why am I doing this? Well, it's quite simple. I want something on the onion ring that'll help extra batter to stick to it. The onion ring is moist, but it just needs a little light dusting of something that'll help increase the amount of batter that sticks. And that's the best way to do it right there. Now let's go ahead and mix up our batter. Okay guys, what we're gonna do here is make a simple egg batter. Now, simple egg batter. Let me put some salt back here. Simple egg batter is just that. It's simple, made with eggs, okay? So let's crack open some eggs into our bowl here. Now after we have our eggs in our bowl, want to go ahead and break those yolks and just give them a quick whisk. 
Now if that metal on metal sound bothers you, sorry about it, but guess what guys? In the kitchen, a certain amount of noise is made and whisks, the good ones are metal and bowls, the good ones are steel and that's just the way of life. Now I want to mix this together. And like I said, you can use milk or cream. And what I did there was uh, about a half a cup of uh, cream. Now we have a beautiful basic batter. And what I'm gonna do is thicken it. I'm gonna add in a little bit of flour. Start with about a quarter cup. A pinch of salt about a quarter of a teaspoon. A little more flour, we're up to a half a cup now. And just a little bit more flour. I want it just slightly thinner than your typical pancake batter. And just slightly thicker than a typical crepe batter. Now if you don't know what a crepe batter is, I guess that's meaningless, but. And there we have it, that's our batter plain and simple. And so, as you see, a simple egg batter, all it is is some uh, cream or milk, some eggs, a bit of flour, and you're ready to go. All right, now, I have everything set up for cooking up our onion rings. We've got our onion rings up here, ready, uh, waiting in their flour. Over here, we have our batter that we made up real quick. Here, I have a pot of oil, and that's heating over a medium-high heat. And I'm gonna bring that temperature up to 325 before we put these onion rings in there. One other thing you're gonna need is a place to drain off the oil when you're finished cooking. I have here a simple sheet pan, and on top of it, some pan racks. These in the cooking industry are what's referred to as a pan rack. Some people call them a cooling rack, but their, their job is much greater than just cooling. Um, this works great as a draining rack. Now, folks, if you're gonna want that restaurant quality, you're gonna to have to do things restaurant way. Restaurants don't drain things on paper towels, okay? So go ahead and break out this kind of rack and get ready to drain off your onion rings after you cook them. Now, you're also gonna need some tongs. Uh, one set of tongs you're gonna to want for doing the battering and getting those onion rings into the hot oil, and another set of tongs that you're gonna to want to uh, get the onion rings out of the oil. You don't want your tongs with fresh batter sticking to a freshly cooked uh, onion ring. So that's the reason you need two sets on this one. As we wait for our oil to heat, we can go ahead and get some of these onion rings down in the batter here. Now what you wanna do though is to make sure you get a variety of sizes because obviously you can't fit a whole bunch of the same exact size down into your pan of oil. So you're gonna want a couple of large ones, couple of medium, couple of small, and get them ready like that. Then just turn them in that batter to get them well coated. There we go. These onion rings, these are ready to go in there. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Man, I love onion rings, I just can't wait. I enjoy it so much when I do this. All right guys, our oil is just now coming up to 325 degrees. Now, what I wanna do is to take these and just drop them down in the oil, and don't worry if it's a little bit messy. It's not gonna hurt anything to drip a little bit of batter here or there. Now this medium sized one, I'm gonna drop it right down in that big one. I'll give you a better view here in just a minute as soon as I get all these in. Here's the one that was broken. Look at that, went right in there just the same way. While those are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more onion rings down in my batter and get them well coated. Now let's get a little bit closer look on that pan. There we go, isn't that nice? There's our first one. I'm gonna break it apart from that one I dropped in the middle of it. I just peeked at the bottom of it and I only did that just to see how far it had cooked. Remember, you're looking for a nice medium golden brown. And you want to watch your temperature. Keep it in between 325 and 350. Don't let it go over 350. Now notice how that batter puffed up nice and pretty. Isn't that sweet? 
And that's exactly what you're looking for in a good onion ring. Simple golden batter that's puffy. Now I want to forewarn you and kind of caution you about using a uh, fryer that has a fryer basket in it. When you're doing onion rings like this, a fryer basket can be um, problematic. It can bring you some complications there that you don't really want. And what I'm talking about, when these things first go in, what's, what do they do? The very first thing they do is drop straight to the bottom. Then they come back up. Now, if there's something hot on the bottom that, uh, that, that's in that oil, it's going to go down there and stick straight to it. And then you're going to be prying your onion rings off of the inside of that basket. So just go ahead and, and get the basket out of the way and cook these up either in a deep fat fryer or in a pot the way I'm doing it here. Either way, it's the same thing. It's a deep fat fryer. Mine just happens to be on the stove, okay? Big pan, cook it up. Gorgeous. They're coming along just fine. They'll be ready in just a moment. So as you can see, we have only just a couple of minutes of cook time here. It yields an absolutely delicious product. So the next time you're wanting to have something, you know, really tasty with that meal that's going to be unique and uh, something that you thought you only would get at the restaurant, well, go ahead and cook up some onion rings. Now see how they're beautiful golden brown on both sides? Take those out and put them on my draining rack. Fabulous. Sometimes I'll cook them a little bit darker than this also. So if you like yours just a little more into the uh, uh, medium brown range rather than the light golden brown, go ahead and do that. They'll get a little bit softer, a little bit sweeter that way. And this next batch, I think I'll go ahead and cook it up just like that. Hey, there it is. That's not that difficult, is it? And let me tell you something, these guys are just absolutely delicious. Light crunch, puffy, mm. so sweet. Everything, everything a good onion ring should be. Man, I'm going to spend some time enjoying these, so will my neighbors. Tell you what, next time you want to cook up a big, beautiful batch of onion rings, give this recipe a try. You're going to love it. They are delicious. Guys, thank you for watching the show. And to my subscribers, I'd like to say a special thank you to you. If you haven't subscribed, well, gosh, what are you waiting for? Please do. I have recipes coming out regularly. Uh, usually once a week, not always, but I try for that. So give it a try. You're going to love what you find here. Fabulous recipes and a good show. You folks have a good day. Hey guys, thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today. Do appreciate it. If you would, please subscribe. If you like this, just click like down there. And if you would, I would really appreciate it if you add me to your favorites. Thank you.